What are you excited for? Yes, yeah, bully. Nature. I'm not getting bullied. How about you, the mother? Bully, bully, they don't do nothing. Don't do that. What? Oh. Excited for camping? <laughs> yeah. 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 How yeah. about you? I'm just ready for a red tie. Absolutely. Red 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 I'm tired to go like that. I got my hat too, but. Johan, what are you excited for? Up the animals. The animals <coughs> are insane. The, the ring headed snake. Ooh. I gotta be specific on that one. Okay. What are you excited I for? Okay. Um, mostly <laughs> seeing more tadpoles. Okay, okay. Justin. Uh, I'm I'm really excited for catching uh, more snakes than the last time I watched. <laughs> like, what are you excited for? I'm excited to see animals. Wait, wait, wait. Michael, what are you excited for? I'm excited for the s'mores. For the s'mores. <laughs> Hi guys, what do you guys say? Who's gonna help me catch a snake? Oh, these guys are on it! All right! Great, I'm glad. You're gonna have a lot of fun, guys. You're gonna learn a lot. I'm so excited you guys are here. Are you excited to be here? All right. This is a leopard it's frog. Really like a a leopard. Leopard. I think it's a leopard. It's not that what spotty, is, but it looks like a muscle. Oh, that's his hook bone. Tell them why is it blowing up like that? Yeah, 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 yeah that's, right that's, that's the hook bone right there. Why, 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 he doesn't want you to be able to swallow. Right, so a lot of times, oh, some animals, yeah. when they think like you're gonna the eat them, fish. yeah, exactly like, like a, a puffer, puffer fish. fish. And despite the funny body, it's hard to catch Exactly, it's hard to eat something when it puffs, 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 gets real big, right? Yeah, like shark, shark, shark. Ooh, you also do thing. that when your breath smells like cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh Pass these around. So I want to tell you that these oh. are. I know it's a Chicago on them, which is where I live. Most of the things in here are the same common things you get here because of the temperature and the climate and the habitat there is very, very similar. Oh, it was this we found. So right? most of these, yep. Yeah. See, see, it's working already. <laughs> At least, yeah, everybody gets one. So I'm ready, if there's any slider, we have this in our development. Yeah, you can nice. see those all over New York and all the ponds and all the, there you go. Yep. We're also gonna be collecting insects here and these insect books would work for anywhere in North America. If you have two different kinds, so it doesn't really matter which kind you have. There you go. We've got a whole bunch of curators and graduate students and postdocs from the American Museum of Natural History that we work on everything from birds to mammals that's coming, he's not here yet, uh, reptiles and amphibians, fishes and insects, okay? So there's different groups of us. So you'll go out with different groups of people to learn about those animals and also help us count what, how many we see so that this data that we, you're gonna be finding these things are actually useful to us, okay? So my name's Frank Burbrink. I'm curator of reptiles and amphibians. I have a reptile and amphibian person here, Sarah. I'm, I'm Sarah Ruan, so I am curator of reptiles and amphibians, but I'm at the Field Museum in Chicago, which is very similar to the American Museum of Natural History. And Frank and I have worked together for a super long time. Yeah. So, and we both really love snakes the most. Yeah. <laughs> so. We don't see fish that look like this in the streams, right? They're not usually clear, right? So what we do is when you collect them, you can actually use different chemicals to make them clear and to stain their bones and their cartilage different colors. So that's what these fish have gone through. So they caught them here and then they went through this cool process and now you can see the insides of their bodies. So every process is called? It's called clearing and double staining. Everything that is red is bone and everything that is blue is cartilage. What do you guys think? You're not scared of that. Nobody's scared. These are the best group I've ever met. Nobody was scared at all. They were like, let me grab it. Uh, Frank, oh, Frank you're, losing, you're losing, you're losing, you're losing one. Exactly. Here, where this little opening is, that's right. called the cloaca. Really and yeah, that's where they go to the bathroom and where they reproduce. And when you look at a snake, at a garter snake or a lot of other snakes, a couple ways you can sex them is you can take a look at how fat their tails are at the base. Uh -huh. And so the tail starts after the cloaca. Right. If we opened this snake up and looked inside, its ribs, just like our rib cage, and starts here and goes all the way down. Wow. And they have ribs all the way till here. Wow. So snakes are not mostly tail, they're mostly body. 
Yeah, yeah. And they have a very short tail relative to their body. Smell that thing? That's its defense. You can take a big whiff of it. Yeah, give it a big whiff. Oh, so you must have. <laughs> Question, like the main organs and where? Because uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So if this snake, so this is a lady, so female, but if yeah. this the uh, organs on this snake, the sex organs for the male are stored in the base of the tail. Yeah. yeah. So See? when they're not reproducing, they're just sitting right there. So hold it inside out. And when they are reproducing, they're able to avert them out of that cloaca. So the truth, this is a spring salamander, Gerinopolis. This guy gets much larger than this, and he eats other salamanders. And he sits in like slow moving waters and he eats these salamanders and these salamanders are called dusky salamanders and they a uh, genus Desmogonathus it looks and they um, sit, hang out in the same water as these guys. So we could find these guys under rocks in water near with slow moving water. So what do you call a species that eat the same species? He's not, that would be a cannibal, but these are different species. They, uh, it'd be the same as like us eating a hamburger. These things are mm. probably, I don't know, 80, 90 million years different than each really? other. Yeah, they're not related at all. So <laughs> it'd be like, crazy. if he ate him, it'd be like eating a hamburger for us. He looks the same, don't you guys? Yeah. But, so these, but, but these guys, look, you can see on his nose, from his nose to his eyes, he has these white stripes. Can you see that? It's this thing called Acanthus rostralis. See, there's like kind of white stripes oh, from his yeah. nose to his eyes. And that's how you can tell these guys. Mm. Oh, I see. And these guys, if you cut their legs or tails off, they'll grow back. Yeah, which oh, no, is no, very no. rare. Oh, yeah. so if you well, lizards to... don't do that. Lizards can regenerate their it's, tails, it's... but not their legs. Oh, right here, right here, right here, right here. Right there, right there. Right there. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Wow. Good catch, man. Oh, good catch. Is it what says a pickerel? I what do we got? Is it green? 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 Or, is it a, or is it a bullfrog? Bum, bum, da, da. It's oh! a bullfrog. Oh! Yeah! That's a bull frog. That's the same one, right? That's the same one. That's a bull. Yeah. So this is a different frog. All right. If I let you go. That's a bull frog. You got to hold him like this. You know what he sounds like at night, guys? He sounds like a lightsaber. That's our good find. Who caught this? Whoever did it did a good job. All right. And he got it with a net, man. That's awesome. I want to start with, what does this look like? Is this a a beetle? Beetle? Beetle. Beetle. beetle? A bee? A bee, yeah, a bee. It looks yeah. like a bee? Yeah. A beetle. A honeybee. What, what does this look like? A bee. Oh, a bumblebee. A bumblebee. A bumblebee. Bumble okay, which one's not a bee? That one. Yeah, see, how'd you know? Because it's smaller. It's smaller and it's like its back looks different from the other one. And this one? Yeah. That looks like a honeybee. Yeah. 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 They're both, so this is the real bee. Uh -huh. This one's a fly. I know. No, yeah, I read about that. I'll say it. I'm gonna say it's a fly. So it's mimicking the. Neither the one will is see. It, what kind of fly? Oh, this one will. Which one? The big one? Yeah, the, the one so on the, the on, on the right. That is a honeybee. So she's she's angry. But this one's a male fly, and it's kind of cool because wow. you see how buff its legs are. Mm -hmm. It uses those legs to hold on to females. Wow. Really? Wow. But this one, this one, or that one? Hey, this one. Yay! Yeah. yeah. So be careful to not drop like What is that guy? Is that a, a beetle? Oh. So this is a cool beetle. So these are called whirly gig beetles. And do you see how they have a bubble yeah. at the end of their abdomen? So they're little scuba divers. Put it back, put it back. There's a smaller one down there too. What is that? Let me hold it. So a fun thing that you can do with black light trapping is that we have these things called aspirators. So to, to pick up the really tiny things, you can like suction it up with 
Yeah, it's like blowing, but you don't want to blow them off. So you compress it before you hold it up to the tiny thing and then you suck it up. Can you take oh, a picture yeah. so like, why here? So I got the mop Why, why do we suck it up and not just pick it up with our fingers? We would crush it if we picked it up with our fingers. So we need to do that. See, I know it's in the tube. Yeah, so you like push it and then when you get it close to you, let go. So it sucks yeah. up. Yeah. Like this. Those are a bit too close. Okay, too big. Now let's see against this blue light and see if it glows in the dark. Yeah, I yes. got it. Can I try again? No. The so some millipedes glow. Mm -hmm. Nice. That was a nice one. Do you see the one that Lacey had? Yeah, she had that glow. So this is called a space moth. It's a kind of moth. Yeah. No, it's so you he's a little freaked out right now. Just, yeah. I have no idea. just in my, unfortunately, no, he's a little oh. nervous right now. See, <laughs> let me try to see if I can get him onto my finger. That way, you guys can get a better look. But when these guys are caterpillars, the caterpillars stand upright like the sphinx in Egypt. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's why they're called sphinx moths. They're also called hawk moths because they fly a little bit like hawks. of your field guides and start to look at you'll see a lot of birds and there's way more birds here that are in those field guides so this is just the most common birds and you'll see these are what we call representative of different groups of birds some birds are going to eat insects uh, such as the warblers um, yeah they, the woodpeckers are going to go in the woods so the birds are using all different parts of the forest and the habitat okay some birds can stay here all winter. Other birds, as soon as it gets cold, they're flying through the tropics where it gets warm. What do you think if you were a bird, what would you be able to have to do to stay here in the winter time? It's very cold here in the winter. It's colder than the city. What do you think? Fall into a cave. They don't have any caves. They gotta stay out there. They don't have any jackets. Go go to ball or something or hide from the cold. No, they can't, they can't, there's nowhere for them to hide. They have to stay out there. So within their body, they have to stay warm. Oh, oh the fur, the fur, make them warm. Yeah, so they're gonna use their, their, their feathers. So this bird is, I don't know if it's in your sheet. Oh, it's a biscuit. Oh, this, this, is in your, this is in your field guide. He's alive? Yeah, yeah it's alive. All of these are gonna be alive. Oh, yeah. these, ones are, these ones are the too American delicate. American start. The American Good red job. Star. Okay, hold that one, Pepper. I found that, I found that. You got the American red star. That one is right. chicken alive. I know, this one wants to get out. So this is a very, that one wants to get out. this is one of the birds you're hearing singing a lot around here. Oh, that's a beautiful So these are gonna eat insects, and this is a bird that has to leave once it gets cold. So for the insect team, there are some things that will be in the same habitat. So we all have a dip net so that we can dip in the water and try and get some of the aquatic. There'll be slightly different ones than the ones that we got here. Um, and we'll have some trays and we can sort through them. Um, it'll be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's all food for the fish, really. Every time you say that, it, it was just eye-opening to me. And I think I want them to understand. Can insects live on the water? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Who says yes? Some insects. Who says no? Some insects. No. So the majority so, won on that one because you know they you heard some no's, right? Uh, <laughs> can, can, can you break that down for us? Can insects live in the water? Sure. So there's different kinds of insects. There's actually 28 different big group class big groups of insects. And a lot of them have just their juveniles, their babies, develop in the fresh water and then they emerge as adults. There's a few beetles that live in the water their whole life. So babies and adults, a few bugs. But then for the ones that we're mostly going to be catching today, they're only in the water for part of their life. And then when they're going to be an adult, they emerge from the water. So most of the ones we're going to catch today are in the last bit of their teenage years, and they're just about ready. Can fishes be in the land? No! Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, that's a good question. Oh, some types of fish can go up a little bit out and get in the mud, can survive a little bit in the mud, but sometimes they need to go back in the like water. Define a little bit. What's a little bit time? What's that? Mean? Huh? When you say a little bit, that 
30 seconds or is that 30 no, minutes? They can sip in water um, oh, hours. They can more like a, like a frog, right? As long as yeah. it's kind of moist, they can still gain oxygen from like the, yeah. they can still live in that area, but they do have to go back in the water. Because they can they cannot get their oxygen into the lungs, lungs because they don't have lungs. Yeah. So they need to exchange and get oxygen through the water, through their branches. So they open the operculum and the water entered by the wall, the mouth, and then they exchange and get the oxygen in the brain. And they're called mud skippers because not only do they crawl across the mud, but they do these big jumps and big like hops too, don't they? Like don't the males do that? Yeah. Yeah. Are you come with me there? <laughs> Have you done karate? No, come here, come here. Let's go, keep going, keep going. Let's go. The plants, the plants. Let's go here, come here, come here. Line it in. Just be careful because it's slippery. Okay. You okay? You need a plastic bag? I got it. Got two. I got it. Put, put some water, please. No, 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 no. Take it out. Oh, no, 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 Hold them. Hold them. It's a per it's a seed. It's a per seed. That per seed? No, it's a yeah. trout. It's oh, a par. Yeah, that's trout. Throw it in. Throw it in. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we go? We're just scared. Do we have three in there? Oh, yeah, it's two little. Um, oh, look, the three fish. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, oh, it's been Everybody in there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's so I When you think of fish, what do you think of? You think of the sea, right? Yeah. You think of all the fish in the sea, right? Mm -hmm. But in fact, there's almost as many species of fish that live in fresh water mm -hmm. than are in the sea, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. right? But anyway, one thing about these guys is that all of these guys' relatives, mm -hmm. it's uncles and aunts, mm -hmm. live in the sea. Mm -hmm. And so this is one group of, of marine fishes that left the sea and came into fresh water. Mm. And then once they were in there, they went crazy. Oh, yeah. And there's lots of species David, are there any fish in there? Yeah. So this group well, of fishes you know, are very interesting so because they have no teeth. That's how you know yeah. it's, like a, how it's a minnow, because it has no teeth through its jaws. Ah. So did you hear that? So those fish have no teeth. Jesus. No teeth through so, its mouth. So it's so different than the top. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> So how do they eat without fish? Yeah, yeah. Like, how do they eat? Probably, they use them, like, um, the probably, That's a great idea. That is yeah. 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 Most of them also get the, the detritus in the bottom of the, the river and they just swallow. Yeah, but what, what they have mm -hmm. is they have teeth in their throat. Oh, mm. really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most fish have teeth in their, in their mouth and also in their throat. Most fish. But the minnows have lost the teeth in their mouth. They have really good teeth in their throats. So, yeah. What? Did you know it's eating like a fish? So, like when you, so when you, sorry, say this, but when you clean a fish, Mm -hmm. Those things you put that are reddish. Yeah. In the those middle, are gills. the gills come out, right? Okay, those gills, gills right? and yeah, in the middle gills. of the gills. Yeah. So what so the, the gills are attached? I don't know. Yeah, what the gills are attached to the bone. There's the throat. throat. There's a big, there's a big, there's a big set of bone. I wish. What about that boy? What about that big guy? So yeah, now we're gonna talk about the problem. Melanie fixed a few of this one. Okay, so this is the. We're debating so the base, the brook trout. These are the babies. <laughs> but it's a juvenile. It's really pretty, right? You see all the spots. How big do they get? They got really big. I don't know. <laughs> so do you guys see the little red fin on top that's in the back? Yes. 
that's actually a way to kind of identify these types of salmon. It's called an adipose fin. Right. So it's a completely different type of fin. This one? Yeah, the little orange one right on the back. Does it serve a purpose? So in some fish, they've actually, people have been studying it to see whether or not, like, if you cut it off, if it changes anything. Um, granted, you're also damaging the fish, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's, is it because it's hurting or not. Um, but there's current studies going on, but it's still not really quite known what adipose fins do. Question, people often say that fish don't really experience pain. Yeah, that's not, yeah. That's <laughs> well, I know you've heard that before, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, they have the sensory canals all on the body, and mm -hmm. they can feel way uh, more accurate the sensors, what's happening in the water, the mineral yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, they can detect any movement in the water. So just like any other animal, we have to treat them with respect and make sure that we're not hurting them or damaging them. And can you see that they are opening the operacons here all the time? So they're breathing, that, so up. the water with oxygen, so you can see all this water running, there's lots of oxygen. It's entering the mouth of the fish and, and going through the branchial arches here. This? and get the oxygen Dave, you want and for them like, to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they but, pull it out of the water. But here's an interesting thing about water. What, who knows the formula for water? The chemical formula. H2O, right? So two hydrogens, one oxygen. So you would think there's a lot of oxygen in here, right? A lot of oxygen. But in fact, it's tied up with the hydrogen. So the only oxygen that's available for these guys, all of these fishes, is the oxygen that dissolves into the water from the air, mm -hmm. right? And that's why fish are so vulnerable, because you would think, oh, they've got plenty of oxygen, oh, the water gets hot and stagnant, doesn't matter, there's, water, there's oxygen there, but there isn't. It's only the dissolved oxygen from the air. So I wanted to quickly come by and ask you, you know, what do you, you what, when sweet. you hear the name Bat, what do you, what do you, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Batman. Batman. Batman, right. So you probably have seen me hanging out over there, working pretty much by myself, right? <laughs> this is exactly what Batman does, right? He's always by himself. It's uh, he's the kind of guy. You guys want a couple of copies of these? I got, I got plenty for you guys too. Here's one for each. Sometimes, you know, because we work at night primarily. You know, we oftentimes we're like past midnight, two, three, four in the morning, trying to catch these things every once in a while. Uh, we typically end up kind of working almost solitary sometimes. It's like, so I have many colleagues, they come out with me every once in a while, but you'll see me, I'm the only bad guy that is over here trying to catch these things. They're really tough to catch. They are, do you guys know how bats find their way around in the, in the dark? I know. What's that? Who can say? Echolocation. Use, echolocation. Yeah, yeah, they use echolocation. But wait, wait, what is echolocation? What does that mean? I don't know. So it, like, like it waves, waves that bounce off tree to tree or objects? P precisely. So, so they basically use sound to understand what is around them. So what they're generally doing is just like yelling out loud at night and listening for the echoes. And then by the, by the uh, direction that these echoes come from, they're able to figure out where there's an obstacle that they have to avoid or where there's an open space they can actually just fly through. Is I got a question. Sure. Is, is, uh, if you still wake up midnight, can you hear the sounds that they're making? Or it's just like... Ah, this is a really good question. Let me tell you, bats actually make this super, super high pitch noise Noises that we cannot hear. Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about this because this is very, very important. Bats make sounds that are at a frequency that is higher than 20,000 kilohertz, right? That's a measurement of, uh, of the, the, the intensity of the frequency, right? Humans can actually hear at most 12,000 kilohertz. So it's too low. Bats are echolocating at really high frequency, so we cannot hear it. This little apparatus that you can actually connect it to an iPhone. And this little thing here, it's an ultrasonic microphone. And it picks up high frequency sounds. And we, we can actually turn on our phone and use a special app that allows us to that allows us to actually record the bats. And actually last night I had it on and we actually had uh, hold on a second, let me find it. I cannot see, I'm old. I'm, I'm pretty old. Okay, here we go. So last night we have a bat flying by and we got some recordings. You see these little lines that we see down here? These are the sounds that they're actually making. So this this little microphone can, is able to record them. Oh, that's awesome. So, so we have one bat that we were able to find. And this one is called the hoary bat. Can you find a hoary bat in your sheet? Yeah. See if you can find it. The first one to find oh, it is yellow. Right here, right here. Yeah. 
Right here. Right, right there. Awesome. So, bats, the they roost in a tree almost camouflaged like as if it was a leaf. They're super, super pretty. They actually have like a little bit of white hair, just kind of like Frank over here. They have <laughs> white hairs all over the place. They're like, but they're really adorable. And also, boy bats are actually the largest bats that we have way up no. here in New York. And you have a question. No. Yeah. Will this get tricked by any other sound, like high pitched noises? Yeah, so will it pick absolutely. up? Is that true? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 you, but you can you can read it as noise. I'm gonna show you the yeah. difference. Okay. I'm gonna show you the difference. So I'm gonna show you the difference between a bat call and uh, and, a, and, a, and just a noise file. So here is what a good bat call will look will look like. Mm. And and then you can actually play the, the you can also play the sound. And this is generally how uh, they will sound. So pay attention to this. Cool. So you see that this little kind of little notes that you see, kind of like little lines. These little lines are basically every pulse of echolocation that they do. They're not constantly yelling. They're almost kind of like doing like ah, 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 ah. And also all of these clicks that they make, they're listening to the echoes and figuring what's around. So they can tell, oh, here's a house, here's a tree, oh, here's a buck that I'm gonna eat, right? So that's so you guys know how that works? You know what that means? They shoot the sound off and it bounces off of something and comes back and it's almost like they're they're, they're using their ears to see everything. Yep, we're gonna try our best to catch a bat. I guarantee you that if we were to get one, you'll flip. These are gonna be the coolest animals you're gonna see. They're really cool, guys. Period, I mean, hands down. But if we don't get to catch one, we'll actually do a little walk around. We're gonna actually walk around the property with this, and we're gonna try to pick one up that is flying about and see if we can identify it. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna walk around with this little bat detector and see what's up. And I gotta tell you, you're gonna be incredibly disappointed. <laughs> because I was actually just sitting right at the bridge, looking at this bat flying by, and I recorded a ton of them. And I'm not kidding, this is actually, I just got these right here. And I'm gonna play the sound for you. So that's one little bat call. We got a bunch of these. And I was able to, just use this and shine my light on it, and I was able to see which one it is. And if you look in your list, it's one that is called the Northern Bat. It has kind of like a whitish belly, and it's really, really easy to hear, but it's actually still pretty small. It's about the size of my thumb. This guy was flying over here. So let's let's go in, and I'm gonna turn this on and see, but like, actually look at, you see every line here that we have? This is a different recording that I made. And look at all the ones I made just now. Wow, wow, so there's a lot wow. of movement. They're not really actually moving where the net is. So it's a little difficult to catch them in there. Ooh. But we got a lot of them actually kind of moving around. So so what we do with this is we can actually get this recording. So we put them in, the, in a computer in the wow. lab, and we can look at the recordings and analyze them carefully to really identify which one it is. So, so sometimes the machine gets them wrong, but then we can figure out based on the shape of the call, yeah. What frequency this call is, That's we can hard. tell which one it is. Right now. As we can see, our, our circle has grown. Uh, our circle has grown. It's been an amazing few days. I want to say first say thank you before I become remiss and forget. And I want to first thank Dave and, and Kat. I don't know if Kat is out here or not. But thank here. you again thank for allowing you. us. Thank you. To make footprints. <laughs> uh, I want to thank, uh, definitely want to thank Frank from, from thinking, talking about this from years ago. And then thank everybody and all the curators and scientists who came out and, and thought it not robbery to share your time um, with us and have us ask you a million questions over and over <laughs> and over again. And each time you said it with excitement, right? Um, so thank you for that. But this is a great time also. I want to hear from the young people in terms of what you guys felt about today. And maybe we can test you a little bit and see what you remember, oh. right? Um, cool. Um, so we'll start with you, sir. Um, how did you feel about the trip today? This is your second time. You're a repeat offender. Right? Uh, what, I, what I feel about the trip is very, it's very like a really fun. We got to catch snakes, toads, and frogs, and different kind of frog species. Also, you found insects, like in the middle of peas and sipid, or the blowing one of the moths. What are the three snakes? We found on this trip. We probably found the ring neck, the garter snake, and the milk, the milk okay. snake. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yes. Good job. We're going around. Yes, sir. 
Tell me about your name and tell me what you feel about the trip. Um, my name is Gabani. Wow, and um, I found on the trip some snakes, like garlic snakes, <coughs> wing neck snakes, and mixed snakes. And I found some bull, bull frogs, toads, and baby frogs. Mm, nice. Yeah, and what, some what do you like the most about the trip? I like it like we have. I like it when we hold the bugs and the snakes and frogs. Uh -huh. My name is Zoe, and I like that we got to hold lots of animals, like frogs, toads, tadpoles, snakes, and insects. Nice. Okay. Uh, is a spider an insect? No. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Because it has more legs. Okay. Hey, so yeah. Hi, I'm Jonathan, and ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> ask me anything. Oh, ask me anything. Tell me what you like about the trip. What I really liked about the trip was the campfire story, Julie. Oh. And the river. And the river. Oh. What about the river? We catch some, I forgot what they're called, the lobsters? They look like lobsters. Yeah, yeah crayfish. Yeah, crayfish. Okay, so there's your question. All right, so tell me three things that you caught at the river. The three things we caught on the river was some, what is the frog eggs called? I forgot. We found some crayfish. Yes. We found some frogs. Yeah. Well, well, most of them were Dead, but <laughs> <That's true. laughs> we saw their skeleton, and it was a good actual skeleton, everything. Yeah. And the last, and the fish that we caught was a. Okay, drum roll, please. It's okay if you don't remember. Somebody give him a hand, please. Um, I think the the trout one. Trout. Yeah. Yeah. Trout. 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 And the other one has kind of a hard sure name. It was a sculpin, so wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, my friend. So we got all the answers. Wow. No, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Angel. Do I make Zoe look like a star? Do I call someone else? I don't know. <laughs> yes. It was either the rainbow trout or the. Oh, oh. The brook trout. Oh, the brook trout. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Nice. Keep going on around. Where we at, oh. Michael? Oh. Oh, oh, hey, sorry, Matthew. Sit down. Let's see. How you know, buddy? <laughs> Good. Tell everybody how old you are, first of all. Seven. Wow. wow. And I look, I look older. Right? I look yes, older. older. Yeah. Well, Nate. Uh, tell them what you like about the trip. I really liked about the trip is uh, that we're camping because it's actually my first time camping. Wow. I really nice. like the nature here and all the animals that we learned about. What I like about this tr trip is how like how we got how we caught some fi fish, toads, and snakes. My name is Justin, and what I really like most about this trip was catching different types of animals, insects, aquatic animals. Yeah, also aquatic insects. Um, what I really like most about the ship was really catching snakes and uh, and the fish. And I really like and I really like that glowing centipede. I'm mm -hmm. millipede. Mm -hmm. I really like that glowing millipede. Mm -hmm. And and um, like it's just. This it's just a feeling I get when I get when I'm around nature that like I don't know I don't know how to explain it. I just love I just love the feeling I get when I'm around a lot of nature, a lot of trees, a lot of green. Do you know that feeling has a name? It's called biophilia. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, humans need to be around nature to feel kinda of whole and stuff and to feel at peace and things. Hi, my name is Kaylin and what I really mostly like about this show was mostly being in nature and like finding new stuff like new like insects and animals. Hi, I'm Angel and um I like the experience because I got to explore animals that I never knew about. That's great. <laughs> hey, take us home, man. Thank you for allowing us to use your space. Kat, yeah. thank you so much. You guys open up your doors. Thank you, guys. We broke your doorknobs. <laughs> no, no, no.
you didn't break the doorknob. It was broken when you got here. <laughs> um, we loved having you all here. Um, this is, uh, it was, we were saying last night, that this will always be something that we will remember right before our baby was born. Aww. And so you all played a, a role in, in an experience that we are going to have before our lives change forever. <laughs> and so uh, we're just thankful that we are able to do this. And uh, yeah, I mean, thank you. Thank you, Frank and Lisa for coming here a couple of years ago and saying, yeah. you should do a bio blitz. Yeah, yeah. Like what, what, oh, yeah let's yeah. do that. What is the bio blitz? So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a special thing that we're able to do. And so we're happy to get to know all of you and, and to be able to do it together. And we hope we get to do it a lot more. Yeah. Yay! I want to also point out from the scientist perspective, it's not just, I don't feel like it's just us giving <coughs> to you guys. I get a lot out of working with you kids and the RYC and everything. Cause you know, if we just do this and collect knowledge and stuff and we don't share it with the next generation, why do we even exist doing this stuff? So. We're hoping that you guys will grow up and, you know, appreciate yeah. these things and maybe want to be a scientist, you know, and study this start, sort of stuff. So I get a lot out of this. And it, when I see you guys catching this stuff, it reminds me, brings me back to my youth of like when I was catching animals and stuff. So it feels like a time machine for me, guys. So thanks for making an old man feel young. <laughs> Yay, science! Yay! Yay! everybody get home safely hopefully we can join this circle again without any breaks in the circle uh next year all right yeah, so thank sure. you again yeah thank absolutely you. actually we'll have an addition for sure yeah. <laughs> one two three Bye.